So this is a canteen that I made. So um, the gourd, this one here, I manipulated the growth in that um, this is uh, usually you make these this shape of gourd where it's flat, you know, it's uh, you use them for rattles and whatnot. But um, so this one, when I was growing it, I wanted it to be a, a canteen ready, you know. So what happens as it's growing, it was more rounded like that. So what I did was I took a flat stone and put it on there. So as it's growing, it just kind of just smushes it down. And every couple of weeks or so, it would take it off, flip it over, and then smash it down again, you know. So that's kind of a really cool way to, like, make a shape, you know. So in canteen gourds like this is really cool because it fits next to your body, you know. So you're carrying it, you have it right there. And this is another canteen that I'm making. And... Um, so this gourd has been taken all the way down to the process where um, what I do with the gourds is I boil them in water and juniper leaves. So you're making a juniper leaf tea. And uh, since a lot of times on gourds, you'll notice that there's like a big uh, mold that grows on there. And sometimes that mold penetrates into the fruit itself inside of there. So if you're using it as a canteen or to hold food or water or whatever, you want to get that, that mold out of there. The easiest way is to boil in the juniper tea. And since juniper leaves uh, have oil in them, it uh, um, has an antiseptic, antifungal, antibacterial, antimicrobial effect. So it's basically killing off anything that's living in there, you know, mold or fungus or whatever. And uh, what happens is that the oils, they penetrate the gourd and help to seal it. So it's, it's kind of doing a lot of different things, you know, and it's using natural materials to produce something that you can use, you know. So with this canteen, um, usually you'll see them as just plain, you know, really plain thing. But I thought that uh, since I'm weaving, a, I wove a net out of um, sinew, I thought that fish would be a really cool, like a little uh, embellishment to it. So I kind of just wood burn these general fish shapes in here that I'm going to eventually decorate. And then I wove the sinew net and then I use the cottonwood piece of wood for the handle. So once it's finished, I'll use a, um, a corn cob as a stopper. So if you use something like that, you can use corn cob, you can use a wood stopper. Um, corn cob, it's really cool because what happens is that uh, there's like trans evaporation that happens through it. So as it's getting wet, it's kind of cooling off the water inside there. So if it's a hot day, you know, you're wandering around in the desert on the mesas, you can take a cool drink of water, you know, instead of having like a, a tepid canteen gourd, you know. So that's one really cool thing that I found about gourds. Um, dippers are really um, something that you can utilize, you know. This one I made into a dipper because there was a big old crack coming through there. So usually when I have crack gourds, I'll bust them down into smaller shapes like this and make jewelry out of them. So it all just breaks down into... Um, something creative, you know, and the gourds are like one, one material that it takes time to plant them, it takes time to manipulate the growth, you know, if you wanted to. Um, you can do a lot of things with them. For dipper gourds, it's really fun to grow these because if you want a really long handle, you uh, get the gourd and you like build a trellis or something for it or plant them next to fences, then you'll get a piece of string or something and tie it around the, 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 the stem as it's growing and you can hang them. So what happens is that the, the weight of the gourd here elongates this part here. So you can get them like really long as long as you want to, you know. So that's really fun to do that. It's just, it's just such a really, like just, it's an interesting material, you know. It's like rattles are one common thing you can make with it. Um, there's a, a tool that you can do, use to make a, it's, it's a, um, a music instrument that's a, a rasp basically you know so you can you put your your um it's usually made out of wood then you put it on there and as you scrape it, it this thing reverberates you know and it produces a sound that uh, represents frogs croaking or thunder you know so um depending on what kind of decoration you know everything has a has a connotation spiritually you know physically um if you Put a design on there you know the the purpose of that is to spread that that energy out into the world you know so there's like a really big um a big uh, connection between spirituality the designs that you use and the intended use for your material you know so um i try to like really embrace that a lot because uh you know, like, you, you can make a tool, you know, like, if you visit an artist's studio, artists, a lot of times, they'll have a custom-made tool that they made themselves, you know, and that's 
for them to make their job easier, but also it gives them a better connection to their material, you know, so gourds are really cool. I uh, usually have like a variety of tools that I've either made or found, you know, um, anything that you can basically stick into the opening you would use, you know, so um, a long time ago you would have like a wooden tool, you know, that you would carve into a shape and a lot of times they were shaped like spoons. So you want it to get in there and just basically scrape, you know, and it's easier to scrape out the pith when it's wet. So after you boil them, usually I'll immediately I'll let them cool down and take them out. And um, it's really fun to do like dipper gourds because you can see all of the pith in there. And uh, usually I'll like insert my tool into an area and push it in there and then you can grab it and it just pulls off. So this one is an unboiled gourd. Um, this one's been treated. So if you feel inside of there, there's like a lot of, a lot of pith still in there and you just want to try to scrape as much of that out. Even when it's dry, because there's seeds in there as well, you know, so if you're working with a canteen like this, you have to really think about loosening all of those seeds out. And basically the, the majority of the work is just this, you know, you're just kind of spending time scraping, you know, you're not really, I like doing things like this because it gives me time to like think, you know, you're like just doing a kind of a, mundane task, you know, and you're just kind of spending a lot of time trying to imagine, I like to imagine what the tool is doing against the inside of the gourd, you know, and it's just because you can't really see in there. As an artist, you know, it's like you have a responsibility to nurture that in other people who aren't artists, you know, your audience, you want your audience to become connected with your work, you know, and the more you can explain about it and the more energy you put into your work, the better it is in the long run for people who collect your work, you know. I like to think that um, by doing stuff like this, it's like you're inspiring somebody to think creatively, you know, you're inspiring them to be more open to things around them. A lot of times gourds are used to make like ceremonial parts, you know, for dress and whatnot. Um, some of the kachina dolls that we carve, they involve using gourds, you know, so it's just a really, really fun, versatile material. But nowadays, you know, it's like uh, I, got, I got into silversmithing. I was a wood carver for a long time, so I would make gourd stuff, but mostly wood stuff. And then I started making jewelry. And then uh, I had all these gourds laying around and my wife was uh, wanting me to get rid of them because they were just sitting around, you know. So I figured, you know, I'll make jewelry. I remember my mom making jewelry, so I started making all of these different gourd earrings. And it's really fun because you can get really creative with the decoration, uh, the shape of them, you know. I do a lot of asymmetrical work. And one thing that's really hard about working with gourds for jewelry is it's hard to get a matching part of it, you know, because you want to cut, cut it into a different area. That part may break, you know, so you're not going to have that same same uh, curve of it, you know, or whatnot. So it's uh, it's really, it's a kind of, uh, sometimes you get frustrated because you want to make matching things, you know. But with that, like I said, you, know, you have to have that ephemeral mentality and you just kind of go with the flow of it, you know. So then nowadays I just embrace asymmetrical stuff, you know. So if you notice like on my earrings and whatnot, they're the same kind of design, but they're not the same shape, you know. It's just kind of bringing it all together. And with the one thing about asymmetry is that if it has a story, you know, it draws more people in and it's more creative, you know. So I, I, that's one favorite thing for me to do is make asymmetrical earrings and the gourd are the perfect material for that, you know. So, um, yeah, I don't know how many pairs of earrings I made so far in the last month. Uh, probably if I make 20 pairs every few days, I think I've made over 100 pairs in the last couple of weeks, you know. And it's just really, it's so easy to work with it, that's why, you know. It's just kind of a really fun thing. I use, uh, like, just common files, you know, sandpaper, a rasp, you know, and um, other gourds. But for the earrings, I'll, I'll take one piece of gourd, and then I'll get another piece and use it to scrape that off. See, it's like really scraping. I'm just barely touching. You can feel it like digging in there. So it's um, really cool because it has a hard shape, you know. It has a hard flat edge, you know, but it's round. So and then if you think about how things are, you know, round things, they have a function. Flat straight things have a function. And gourds are, it combines all of that, you know. So um, there's people that use, like, they'll sharpen gourds down and use them as cutting tools, you know. So um, really a lot of really cool things about it. It's just uh, interesting. And to me, it's like I haven't worked with gourds in a while. After I grew all, a lot of these, you know, they just sit around. And it's kind of, um, 
if you don't use it, you know, you have to either get rid of it or figure out something, you know. So I figured I would get into board work again and just start learning the process again, you know, like kind of make it into something interesting. So um, if you go to art shows, you know, look at the gourd artists and they're usually really kind of uh, really creative people, you know, like they have like a different mentality and it's just, uh, yeah, bird houses, you know, you can just make anything. Oh, so the earrings, they're uh, using acrylic paint. And so um, what I do is I paint them, uh, well, I'll make the earrings into this shape and then what I'll do is I'll wood burn the designs using this wood burner. So it's just that really the, the tip of this gets super hot, you know, so you can draw straight lines or whatever. So all the straight lines on these earrings are made with this. And then I use an acrylic paint to make the, the colors and the design. And then afterwards, I coat them in linseed oil. So linseed oil is a natural material, you know, natural liquid, and it helps to seal and it pops out the color. So as soon as you paint it on there, the gourds take on this really nice, like a uh, golden hue, you know, and it just makes everything stand out a lot more. So um, some people use like tongue oil, you know, a lot of the natural oils really make the gourds look nice, you know. So um, depending on what you're using it for, because I use a lot of uh, mineral pigments for like carvings and whatnot, but those, they'll, they'll rub right off, you know, so it's like, um, sometimes if you're using mineral pigments, what you would do is get a really, really rough piece of sandpaper and go over it. That way the, the mineral pigments can stick on there, you know, better. But um, traditionally, you know, a long time ago, they were just plain, you know, you would like maybe um, the weaving of the net for canteens, that's where the artwork came in, you know, so you can like do different types of weaving, you know, and make the nets either really loose, like how this one is, there's a lot of big, um, big gaps between it, you know, or you can use like, uh, make the weaving really tight, you know, so it's smaller squares, which is more structurally stable. So, oh yeah, yeah, here's the, what the earrings look like and you know it's really fun making them because they're like a it's like kind of a total offshoot from the regular stuff that I make you know so it gives me a chance to utilize um, wood carving skills you know painting skills all my wood carving tools are now gourd carving tools these days you know so it feels good because I'm uh, I do a lot of jewelry nowadays and I hardly do wood carving so it feels good to be able to use these tools that are just been sitting around you know and uh, giving them a little break and now my jewelry tools are taking a break <laughs> mm -hmm. so yeah it's a really cool interesting process how long does it take to get the gourds ready for, you know from the wrapping and the cleaning out of the inside to where you can uh, well, you have your boiling process, you know, so well, well, first you have to like drill your hole in there and make the whole part. Then uh, from there you do the boiling process and I try to boil them between an hour and two hours. You know, just it takes, I just want it to be thoroughly saturated, you know, you want the, the water to loosen up the pith inside and all of that. Then once you boil them, I immediately, I'll just let them sit in there in the water for a while until they cool down. And then while they're still wet, you do all the scraping because it comes out a lot easier when it's wet you know so and then um you would think they take a long time to dry i this was outside this morning filled with water and i poured it out and it's dry you know so yeah once you treat it and everything like it's because of the oils in that juniper oh. yeah so it's like it's basically like a really light oil coat in there too so it, it helps to um prevent the water from thoroughly penetrating it you know so uh but once you're it just depends on how fast you and your tools, you know, to scrape it all out. Um, I think with this one, it took me like maybe three hours just to sit there and scrape it all out, you know, because you think you're done. But then once you put your, your tool back in there, there's still more stuff coming out, you know. Like I stuck my finger in there just a little while ago as far as I can and I like scraped a little bit out too, you know. So it's still, there's still a little bit in there. But depending on your tools, you know, it's just like you'll, you like you have to walk around your yard or your house and look for like a, like something that'll work, you know. So it's just, it's that's really fun too because I learned uh, metal smithing other than jewelry. So I took pieces of steel that I found and pounded them into, heated it up with my torch, you know, and then just sit there and with my hammer and use my anvil to make a bunch of really cool different shapes of tools, you know. And uh, that's been fun too, just because you're making something specialized for this, you know. And it's uh, but basically any kind of a sharp. I've used just branches off of a tree before, you know, and it's just kind of, it's like, you use what you can in order to get the job done, basically, you know, so, but um, it's just like, as much time as you want to dedicate to it, you know.
So like with something like this, I think just to get all of this was maybe a couple of hours because you're working with, a, I was using a coping saw, you know? So you're working with curves, you know? And every time you're cutting something that's on a curve, it's a lot harder because it's wanting to go different places, you know? So if you're trying to get like a straight line, it's really difficult, especially these steps, you know? These are like cloud patterns here. So it's like you're using that shape to form clouds, you know? So that, that took a little while to get the saw to do what I wanted. Cause I was making another one of these and I was like holding it and I ended up crushing it cause I was holding it too tight, you know? So it's just, uh, I don't know, one of my friends, she was watching me and she, she when I broke it, she's like, oh my God, you know? And I was like, what, what? And she's like, it broke, aren't you afraid? Aren't you like, mad about it you know i'm like oh no it's just a um it's just a gourd you know it'll do that so and then she kind of like thought about it and a few days later she called me and she's like i really liked how you explained that it's it's ephemeral you know it's like it wasn't something to get upset about because that's the nature of the, the material you know and it's like uh it just feels really cool to be able to have that mentality spread you know so one question we got online was how do you dry them and how do you prevent them from rotting oh um so if you want usually you'll just let them dry you know like on the vine you put them into the sun and just let it, it takes a long time for them to dry enough for that you can actually um think like something like this would take about eight months you know, so that's a, it's a long process, you know, you're growing them all summer, you know, you're, if you're manipulating the growth, you know, that takes time. But then at the end, you can't just immediately cut into them and start using them, you know, they have to take this whole drying process and that takes, uh, so like if you had this one, if you'll notice on here, there's a little indentation right here and that happened while it's drying, you know, so if you don't want that to happen, you have to actually get out there again and keep turning them, you know, so... Um, it's really cool. Sometimes you'll you'll purposely have that going, especially for like a canteen, so that if, when you put it down, it'll just rest. Yeah. So that's that. It, it just takes a lot of thought and long-term thought on it, you know. So um, about eight months usually to dry. I think uh, my favorite thing about working with gourds these days is making tools, you know, and uh, making jewelry from it. So really fun thing for me to do. How far back? historically have gourds been used you know i was trying to research that and uh I, I i don't know like it's it's gotta be a thousand years you know since plants are domesticated and i think one of because there's wild gourds you know and i think they, they were probably leaning towards domesticating those picking the thickest skin ones you know and then just keep planting those seeds over and over again and then uh, different species start popping up you know so it's a it's a really ancient form you know and I was reading inside the museum that a lot of times the old clay water pitchers you know they were modeled after this shape you know the gourd shape squash shapes and whatnot and I thought that was really interesting so it's like they're taking this really old vegetable fruit you know and then replicating it in a more sturdier material like clay so yeah it's it's an old thing I would I would say it's a long time and you can like trace some vegetables and some plants from like Mexico up into this area, you know. So, yeah, I have no idea how long, but like throughout the world, you know, it's always been around. So, <laughs> and do you ever work with uh, buffalo gourds? Not really. They're they're too thin, you know. Um, if you get one of those buffalo gourds, you can crush it with your hand, you know. So, um, what I used to, well, I lived in a place out in Donny Park for a while, and there was like a whole big buffalo gourd patch. So what I was doing was getting them and then just. Um, making really simple designs and stringing them and putting them around the house. And uh, one friend of mine, he'll um, get the buffalo gourds and drill a bunch of holes and put a tea light in there. So it was like a little, like a light, you know? And uh, stuff like that is like, if you're working with thin skin gourds like that, you want to make them into something that you're not going to touch a lot, you know? So like it's perfect for like stringing them up as a light, you know? Um, you can use them to make uh, like wind chimes, you know? Because they'll be bumping against each other but they're not going to be breaking you know so but buffalo gourds are really i don't like using them because they're so thin you know but they have its uses <laughs> awesome yeah. and people are interested in seeing you uh burn oh yeah yeah so this is a really cool thing this wood burner i've had like for a long time and it was using used for my uh wood wood burning you know so the tip is going to get really hot and uh the first step for these earrings that I make is I always wood burn my hallmark in there first, you know, and that kind of gives me a little warm up. <laughs> so, see, it's just like a wood burning pen. It gets super hot and you can make straight lines with it. So, 
this is the first step in making my gourd earrings is getting my name and uh, I sign I have hallmarks for jewelry and I have hallmarks for my woodwork so with my woodworking if you ever see my wood carvings around chances are you're gonna see this hallmark here which is basically my first initial and um, my cl clan symbol so I'm tobacco and rabbit clan so I always use either a smoking pipe or um, on my jewelry I have a tobacco leaf and a flower stamp you know so I'm just kind of doing that and then making the smoke generally on my designs I start out with a border so I make like a border line around it like that and then I just kind of follow the curve of the gourd. Uh, when you're using a wood burner, you have to be very careful and very steady because um, being that the gourd is, is slick and hard, mm -hmm. and this is hard and slick as well, it'll slip, you know. So if you're not careful and your finger's in the way, you're burning your finger. Which, but you just kind of have to, like, fun. use a nice steady motion, you know, and it just, see the line just burns in there, you know. You're just kind of holding it down and letting the tool do its work. So I start, usually with these gourd earrings, I like to use a lot of water symbols because uh, the gourd itself takes a lot of water to grow, you know. So on this one here, on the border, let me find a, a pair here that shows an example of that border. Yeah, right here. So here's what the border looks like. And all of these little tiny white dots on there, those represent moisture in the air. So it's like imagery that relates to water, you know, so it's like honoring the gourd as being something that carries water, you know, that uses a lot of water. So I'll make the, the um, design around it. And I've been really getting into uh, using thunder and lightning symbols on these gourd art, you know, so um, it's just kind of there's there's uh, there's curves and then there's points, you know, so that that leads a lot of opportunity to be creative with it. So I'll use a lightning symbol on these ones again because we just had a lightning storm earlier. So I'll draw that out and it's just kind of, you're basically just utilizing the shape and you're kind of going you, crazy with it. Do you find that you, you come back to a lot of the same themes as you go through and, and design or is it just whatever strikes your fancy? Pretty much whatever I, I strikes <laughs> strikes my fancy you know yeah well I got uh, you get like people who um, want like a certain design you know mm -hmm. like uh, there's a gentleman that came by last weekend and I was making these and his wife is really into snakes so um, what I'm gonna do is make a few of these pairs into snake designs you know and then um, I'll call him later on tomorrow or something and uh, have him pick out designs for his wife and it's uh, he was gonna bring her next weekend but she he wanted to surprise her, so <laughs> so I'll finish uh, a few snake pairs for him to uh, choose from, and then uh, he'll surprise her, and she'll be wearing them next weekend. You know? So right now I'm just making a, a lightning pattern, then I'll add a little rain cloud on the bottom that represents the the rain and the lightning. You know, so boom. So was yeah, it, there um, we go. So, was it being brought up with your mother as a gourd artist that um, sort of you, you got a chance to practice your skills and everything? Or? I never really thought about doing this till like uh, just recently again. You know? Oh, yeah, cool. yeah. Because it was just like my like I said, my wife uh, I had all of these that I've grown. A lot of these that I've grown like eight years ago, mm -hmm. and they've just been sitting in a big tote in my shed. And my wife's been on a cleaning streak, you know, so she oh, said, uh, yeah. <laughs> so she said, are you going to use those gourds? If not, I'm going to get rid of them, you know. So I'm like, I spent all that time growing them, and I don't want her to throw them away, you know. So I had to get off my butt and actually start making stuff with them. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's just kind of, you have to think about that as well, you know. I mean, uh. Because, I mean, I don't know, I'm like an artist, you know, you collect yeah. tools and the tools will just sit there for a while and eventually you'll use them, you know. Yeah. Same thing with this, you know, and now is the time for me to use the gourds, you know, so. Yeah, but see, and it's just a simple thing about just making a, a few lines, you know, and just kind of making the cloud pattern, lightning patterns from them. So then uh, matching them up is kind of the more challenging part, mm -hmm. you know, because like I said, it's a... Uh, People want kind of matching things, you know, but for me, I, I like asymmetry, you know, so these, these are perfect, you know, so I'll do the next part of this side here. Same thing, you know, you're making your border here, and uh, what I'm trying to do is just kind of make like a story with the designs, you know. The butterfly? Do you 
you use different tips? Yeah, I do actually. I have a, um, uh, this tip here, which is my favorite tip, but I have another tip that's really, really long. So I should be using that tip to make these straight lines because the, 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 the tip is about that long. And the whole thing gets hot, you know. So like with uh, potters, if you've seen traditional Hopi potters, when they paint, they use a yucca fiber as the paintbrush. And the, some of them are real long, some are straight. So if you see them painting on the pot, in order to get a really long line, they'll dip that in their in their pigment, you know, and they just lay it on there and go like that. And that, being that it's a long shape, it just makes a really straight line, you know. So same thing with these tips you know like the long one is just perfect for making long lines you know without having to spend the time going from one point to the other you know you're just laying it on there and going like that so it, it all it just depends on what you're going to use it for um there's some tips that are like more blunt you know mm -hmm. there's like a stamping tip where it's just a little block and it just gets hot and oh, you just wow. touch it you know so so i got the lightning on this side and i'll make a thunder symbol on this side and you just want your things to be, uh, you want your story to be symmetrical, even though the material isn't symmetrical. So if you guys ever want to mess around, go find a, go on eBay and look up wood-burning pencil, and usually there's somebody selling one of these machines on there. And it's really fun <laughs> to just mess around. You can wood-burn on anything. <laughs> but there, that's, that's basically the design for this pair of earrings, so lightning and thunder. Then eventually I'll do the wow. painting right now. And yeah, so this is a really kind of, kind of really cool thing that I did. And then like with this, I've been like scraper tools like that. You know, you can like put um, symbols that represent strength. You know, or symbols that represent erosion. You know, things like that. You know, for something like scraper tools. You know, if you have erosion symbols or things like that, it makes it spiritually useful you know because uh not too many artists think about the spirituality behind tools you know like if you're using something like that i was in school in santa fe at iaia and we had a, a, a discussion about how you don't really hear about the spirituality of, of art you know it's like people will make art to for people to enjoy you know but then if you think about what art does you know it, it elevates people's minds you know and if you can add an aspect of that it makes it stronger so I always try to think about how you can make your tools stronger, you know, not, not just physically, but just how the more you use it, the more you be comfortable with it, you know, the more you get connected with it, and then the thing that you're working on becomes stronger too. So it's just kind of, it trickles down in many different ways in order to produce something, you know, so. Yeah. Well, thanks everybody for tuning in and uh, checking it out. <laughs> and we'll be here all weekend, and I'll be working on gourds for the rest of the next, I think, year or so. <laughs> Anybody needs any kind of a gourd project or any kind of thing, I'll be finishing.